Hello. Okay, let's do another proof for fun. Here's the statement. Right here it says if this equation is equal to zero, then a is equal to b, or b is equal to c, or c is equal to a. In another word, at least two of the a, b, c have to be equal. All right, and of course a, b, c are real numbers. Hmm. It seems like this right here is just we can do it as usual, like multiply everybody by its lowest common denominator. Combine items and blah 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 and hope for the best. I don't know though. <laughs> and of course, you should try to pause the video and try it first, right? Okay, so I assume that you just did that and let's see how we can go through this. It seems hard, but together we can prove it. Well, first, the good thing is that this, this, and that, they are all in the same form, right? Of course, just with different um, variables. Well, more importantly though, a minus b over 1 plus a b, that kind of reminds us that tangent of something minus the other formula, right? And let me just put that down right here for you guys. This one, tangent of a minus b is equal to this. And you see, this is similar to that, as long as we can take a and b and change them to tangent. Alright. Okay. So maybe I would like to do that, and my strategy is, because here is a uh, equation with like adding, if we can now change this into an uh, equation and one of the sides are just multiplying, we will have a better chance to argue that, hey, one of the factors has to be equal to zero and all that. So I'm going to utilize a bit, right, both of this. And of course, let's start with the most exciting thing, which is writing down a PF. But I promise you guys this time, this is not the only thing I can do this time, right? <laughs> Alright, here we go. I'm going to slightly make this slightly more legitimately, more legitimately. I'm going to let, let's say, three angles, alpha, beta, and gamma, on the interval from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2, so that, as such that, let's say we have tangent of alpha is equal to a, and then tangent of beta it's equal to b, and lastly, tangent of gamma is equal to c, right? Well, why do I want to do this? First, let me make a note right here. Of course, I'll put on a note in blue. If you look at the interval from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2, here is the deal right here. Of course, tangent is bounded between these two vertical asymptotes, and the tangent goes out like this all the way from negative infinity to positive infinity, right? So what we can say is, on this part, tangent is 1 to 1 and on 2. In another word, if you want to solve the equation, tangent x is equal to some number k, this equation will always have a unique solution on this interval. So for example, right here, if you have a, let's say the a is right here, just some positive number, well, of course, you can just go to the curve, and you can look down, and the alpha will be on the x value right here, which is this. And you will only have one solution. And if this little b is negative, use the same thing. This right here, you get your beta here, right? So this right here is how we are going to make it slightly more carefully like that. All right, so here we have a is being tangent alpha, b is equal to tangent beta, and you see this part, will be just this, and of course we can change that into tangent of one minus the other, right? All right, so this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to not write down this like many, many times. So I will do what math people will do. I'll put down this right here as a star. So I'm going to tell you, after this substitution, well, the star equation, this part is just going to be tangent of alpha minus beta, because here are my angles. So let's go ahead and write that down. First part is tangent of alpha minus beta. And similarly, for this right here, it's just plus tangent of beta minus gamma. And then lastly, plus tangent of gamma minus alpha. And all that shall be equal to zero. All right, great. Ah, let's see. Hmm. Well, here we have tangent of one thing min uh, plus tangent of the other thing right here. And, well, here 
we have tangent of capital A plus tangent of capital B. If we multiply the denominators right here on both sides, we have a formula for that. So that's what I'm going to do. Just focus on this part, and the inputs are going to be the following. Here is my input capital A. Here is my input capital B. So after I apply this times that formula, we get tangent. And let's write down the A plus B part first, which is going to be this, namely alpha minus beta for the capital A. And then we are going to add, which is in blue, right? And then B, which is beta minus gamma, like so. And then so close that. But we have to multiply by 1 minus tangent of A and B. So let me open the parentheses like this. And then tangent of another parenthesis like this. And yes, I'm going to fill in the parentheses with alpha minus beta in red and then beta minus gamma in red. And I promise you guys, I will try to improve my handwriting on tablet. All right. <laughs> All right. So this is what we have right here. And then we will have the plus tangent of gamma minus alpha. And that's all equal to zero, of course. All right, here, minus beta plus beta, they cancel, which is very nice. And perhaps we can just distribute. And you see, here is the idea. When we multiply this and that, a lot of things are multiplying. And when we have the right-hand side as equal to zero, that's a great idea, right? So let's continue. All right, now we notice this and that, they are very similar. And in fact, I will just write down some notes right here for you guys. When we have tangent of alpha minus gamma, well, First, we can factor our negative inside. So this is tangent of negative, and then we can switch the order of subtraction, and it becomes gamma minus alpha. And then, of course, we know, man, tangent is an odd function, so we can factor our negative. That's great. So this is equal to the negatives in front of us already, tangent, and then we have the gamma minus alpha, which is very, very nice, right? Yes, it is. In another word, this and that can be legitimately canceled out. So good, because now everybody here is multiplying. So what does this mean? Yes, of course, this implies at least one of this is equal to zero. So let me just pick one of them that say tangent of alpha minus beta is equal to zero. And it doesn't really matter which one you pick because as long as we can show one of these right here is true, then we are done, all right? Well, here, tangent of alpha minus beta is equal to zero. What can we say about alpha minus beta? Yes, it has to be equal to zero. And the reason is because, well, we have to refer back to this interval here. When we have alpha minus beta as our input, well, alpha minus beta, you see, alpha beta, they are on the interval from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. So this minus that, it will be going from negative pi to positive pi. And the only way that tangent can be 0 is the input being 0, right? So from here, we know alpha is the same as beta. And we know from here, alpha is just the same as inverse tangent of A. Similarly, beta is the same as inverse tangent of B. And finally, because inverse tangent is 1 to 1 and on 2, we can say A is equal to B. And we have shown that one of the inequality is true. So we are done. So let's go ahead and put the perfect square right here, even though we don't have any perfect square in this video. But yeah, here is the perfect square, right? Okay.